reports that internationally wanted arms trader the Jackal has perished in fighting between local militias. BBC sources have told the World Service that he and a number of fighters died protecting refugees fleeing the civil war that broke out in the country earlier this year. I must ask you a quick question. Are you certain it was suicide? There is no doubt about it. If you saw it yourself, you would know. Did no one try to stop him? You say the people you were with thought he was a hero. He was a hero, or a monster as well. We all knew what he had done for us, but it was well known that he had the blood of South Mali on his hands. It's true that the allure of Frank Builders is only so great because we know so little about anything he did. All the records end after 1992 when he left May's prison in Ireland. I've seen some shit. Every kind of person, every kind of cause, every kind of duty. And every time I saw something new, I found a new form of betrayal. I couldn't tell the truth, I couldn't keep a secret, I couldn't be your friend. But there was one fucking thing I could do. And to do it, I needed to stop thinking about my sins and find a pilot dumb enough to take me down to hell. Okay, we go. Hey, sir, sorry for the delay. So you going to a hotel in Pala? Yeah, I know the place. It's lucky for you, Pala has only one hotel still working. Welcome to Frank's Penance, a narrative let's play of Far Cry 2, weaving together the solid gameplay with a hugely expanded backstory for my chosen character, Frank Builders. You see that man? You won't see any more very soon. That's probably the last one out of this Full of rich people. Only minor connections can get you out there. The aim is to combine the events of the game with the body of original narrative to create a fleshed out story arc. I'll be providing gameplay commentary on the story based sections of the game and delivering the narrative during the longer travelling periods and during the infamously frequent battles of hostile militia. Bloody idiot, nobody follows the rules anymore. Note that I'll be using Dylan's realism mod and some self-imposed rules for this playthrough that will have many effects on the gameplay that I'll explain in a moment. I told him the plane's gone, but they don't believe me. Everyone thinks the big planes are coming back. Who can say anymore? <laughs> Now as I said this game has been modified to have the combat be more realistic. The main difference is that all weapons are much more powerful. For example an enemy can now be killed or at least incapacitated by a single shot to the body with even the weakest of handguns if they have no armour. Things aren't so bad for the player, you can still take several bullets before dying but your health bar drains much faster than it did in the original game. Some other changes are that you can carry less ammunition, enemies are more likely to use signal flares to summon reinforcements, and the combat AI has been made more aggressive. I'm playing on hardcore difficulty as well, just to add a little more challenge on top of all this. I should add though, that in this series, sequences in which Frank permanently dies will be cut and reshot, so you won't be seeing any failed attempts at missions. The exception to this might be if Frank is saved from death by a buddy that still needs to redo parts of a mission. This is Liberation Radio, speaking the truth for the truth seekers. And the truth is that your country needs you. Beware the evil APR scorch. A plague has gripped our people. They're not fans of the DJ. Maybe his music choices, who knows? And what about some of the checkpoint is all the I mean, I'm Gimzana. I think I am the Kumamanga like I was. Kumikani is so much. Where are you heading? My passenger, driving him to the hotel in mm -hmm. town. You come from the airport? Yes, sir, the airport. Uh, gentlemen, you are posted here all day. Yeah. On my way back, I grab some food here. Yeah. You drink beer, yeah? Yep, beer. We drink beer. Hurry up then. Move along. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. See you soon, sir. For no offense. 
But these militias, they come into our country, steal everything, and they leave us nothing. Now the rules I'm using for this playthrough are simple, there's only two. One is that there's no use of the DLC weapons until I'm at least halfway through the game, since they don't cost anything in-game, it's a bit unfair. Uh, the second rule is that I shouldn't do anything that Frank Builders would not do. The meaning of that rule is a bit fuzzy, but it should become clearer as we learn more about his backstory during the narrative sections of the videos. Now with all that said, I'm going to leave you to the game's introduction and I'll return when the gameplay begins and this Let's Play gets started. A lot of troops nowadays. It's okay, they keep to themselves most of the time. Don't let this concern you, just boys let him off steam, right? You remember how you Everyone's trying to find a way out of the country. Only fools stay now. <laughs> fools and cab drivers. Okay, you don't look so good. You tired? Target's presence in the state continues to be a stabilizing influence. He's largely responsible for the recent influx of weapons into the country and clear violation of the joint signatory framework. His reputation as a dangerous arms dealer is well deserved. Orders are to terminate. Well, that didn't work out the way they planned. I'm still breathing and you're the one with malaria. You can tell them you tried, but that means fuck all, doesn't it? You're fired. You know it and so do I. You had your shot, but now it's over. And since men like you only work for money, you're no longer my problem. You'll have to find something else to do with yourself now. What your old clients don't seem to understand is that they can't kill me. Do you understand what I'm saying? Nobody kills me. Nobody. I'm the one who decides who lives and who dies. Me. You know, there's a book I read a long time ago. I still think about it every day. It helps me understand life out here. The book talks about men and what motivates them. Simple, really. A living being seeks above all else to discharge its strength. Life itself is will to power. Nothing else matters. <laughs> so long. And so the game begins. It's the morning after Frank has arrived in South Mali. He has managed to shake off the fever that he had as part of his onset of malaria. But now, outside the hotel, some sort of ruckus is causing a stir and he has to escape. Luckily, the jackal who discovered his presence in South Mali decided not to kill him, thinking that he was simply unimportant in the face of him having caught malaria and the fact he'll probably die in this engagement. Now Frank must try to escape. You can see outside the building there's uh, gun battles going on. These battles are between the factions who have decided to break their ceasefire and are now fighting over control of this town. So I need to find a way to escape this building and then escape the town. I find this assault rifle on the ground which is going to help me out. 
and I'm going to dive out this window into a back alley and see if I can find a way to get out of the town. <laughs> that way doesn't look good, it's all blowing up. I tried coming up onto this balcony but there was no way down and the street below was full of militia engaging with each other. I came around to retry that route with the explosion but there were two guards and everything was on fire and I will die if I run through the fire so I need to find an alternate route. So I'm running back down to the other end of the alley. It looks a little, little bit clearer. <laughs> Something's blowing up. There's guys there to the right. I don't see this guy right in front of me until the last minute. I missed the shot. I have to turn around and finish him so he doesn't shoot me as I run. Then I just sprint down this road, around this outbuilding, and manage to get some cover from the town itself. There's a little road here coming up and out of the town. As I run, I fire off a huge burst into the vague figures I can see moving around on the road, trying to stop them from chasing me, unloading with my pistol just to suppress them somewhat, and now I can finally make my escape. This bridge leaves town, leaving the uh, territorially contested zone. So now there should be some measure of safety out here. However, as you can see, Frank's fever is returning. He is too ill to be running through this action and dealing with this stress. And it also looks like his malaria pills are gone. Perhaps the jackal took them. So he simply falls unconscious and that will be up to fate to decide his future. <laughs> So as we faded out there, we've heard some strange sounds. It seems like someone has taken Frank's body, and now he wakes up in a strange new location, but at least he's still alive. You a mess, man. That business looks nasty. So we see a bit of tutorial information here. There's going to be tons of this tutorial information as we begin the game. You can use uh, the H key to recover yourself from critical runes, such as that bullet shot wound I take into the arm. My name is Carbonell. I don't care what your name is. You're just the problem right now. Who are you working with? You got some of my guys killed at the hotel, you know that? So I think you work for me now. I've got a few errands for you, Aaron boy. Get on out here. Get yourself kitted up. There's ammo and meds for you. So suddenly it seems I've fallen into the hands of Carbonell, some sort of faction militia lieutenant who is uh, asking me to work for him. And it seems at the moment I have no choice given that he just saved my life. And I don't even know where I am. So he seems to have trusted me with these weapons and these medical supplies here on the wall. So it seems he's going to want me to do something fairly important for him. And we can see here, this is how health is restored in the game. You inject yourself with these right, morphine syringes. Sleep. The shit really hit the fan back in town. There was supposed to be a ceasefire, but that's all out the window now. I work for a guy named Kakumba, local boss for the United Front. I've got all my decent guys out in the field trying to keep the APR from making a land grab. So that just leaves you to take care of the monkey work. First thing... I need to get that piece of shit coop outside back on the road. You look like a vocational school dropout. Go out there and see if you can get the engine running. Try not to get distracted between the door and the car. You look like you're gonna drop dead any second. Guard! So he wants me to fix his car. He gave me a lot of weapons for it, so perhaps it's gonna be dangerous, or perhaps he has something else in mind as well. So my first step outside, I have no idea where I am. Somewhere deep in Marley's jungles. I could be anywhere. I do have a map I can look at, and as the game's telling me, there's always a uh, notifier of your current objective on this map, so you can work out where you're supposed to be going. So here's the vehicle I'm supposed to be fixing. Fixing vehicles in the game is quite simple. You simply have to uh, crank something under the hood, and their health is magically restored. Quite easy, so now the vehicle will be back on the road, and I can drive it. Vehicles, when they're damaged, are much slower, and they're liable to explode. Now looks like Carbonell is calling me. Let's see what he wants. Okay, good. Now that you're mobile, you think you can pull off a raid? The APR's got a forward position half a click south of here. If something bad happened to the shitheads manning that post, no one would ever know. Go take him out. So this is what he really wanted. He wants me to do some dirty work to kill some of his political opponents in the area. Well, Frank has no choice at this stage, so I guess we're going to have to go and do it. My name is Frank, and by the grace of God I am dead. Things never had to get so fucked up. If I could go back to the beginning, there isn't a single thing I wouldn't have done differently. And the beginning is a long way from this sandy shithole. It was in the quiet village of Garrison on the Emerald Isle of Ireland. Being as it was on the border of the Empire and the Republic, the whole place was a mix of Catholics and Protestants trying to get along while the whole world told them not to. I was on the Catholic side, in theory. Let's just say I don't think the Pope is going to be inviting my ghost to give Christmas Mass anytime soon. 
They just called me a Catholic because my parents wouldn't let me go to the local Protestant school. They knew about what the Lord wanted for me, and it certainly wasn't to rub elbows with his other flock. I knew I was missing out on something, and I did my best to make up for it by causing trouble every moment I could. So I have arrived at the location that Carbonell wanted me to raid. It seems to be some sort of campsite, and for now I don't see anyone here, so perhaps further down this road in front of me there are some hostiles to deal with. There was this small outbuilding which I snuck into. It was clear, however, there was an ammunition supply inside, so I'm taking that ammo. That's completely filled my ammunition reserves, although I only have about four clips for this pistol and three for my assault rifle, so I can't get involved in a heavy gunfight. As I creep closer, I spot a guard, heavily armed with an assault rifle, walking my way. I decided to try and go around him and check for other guards before I started firing. I'm going around the back of these rocks to put something between that moving guard and me. I can see the building, which assumably is where these guys are camping out. The guard, you can just about see there, walks off towards where my car was, giving me an opportunity to scout out over here. I'm keeping low in the grass, however, anyone looking out could see me, and it seems that this guy standing by the door decides he saw some movement and starts walking my way. I'm forced to take him out because he would have discovered me in just a few seconds, but of course the other guard must have heard the gunshot. I'm walking back, but I don't see him on the road anymore. Suddenly, there he is. <laughs> he was standing right in front of me. We saw each other both at the same time, and I was the first to fire. I just got word you cleared out that post. Not too shabby. Okay, I've got another chore for you, but I can't have you falling down in the middle of it. Get some sleep, resupply, and be ready to go on a few. You'll be safe at that house. So Carbonell does have more for me to do. It seems I have not paid back the debt, but he wants me to rest up in this house, which is probably a good idea because my fever's going to come back. I was trying to see if I could find the body of the guy I killed there in the beginning to see if he had any supplies, but I couldn't see it, and I uh, didn't think he had anything particularly useful, so I abandoned it. The house itself looks relatively safe, so I'm going to head inside. There are safe houses like this all over South Mali that you can use to rest up, often to find supplies, meet with your buddies and find vehicles. And as you progress through the game and become a more notorious mercenary, your safe houses will begin to be upgraded and have more equipment for you to use, uh, ostensibly left there by the friends you make for you to use in your missions. So I'm going to set an alarm on my watch and we are going to have a quick nap. I'm going to wake up this evening. So time is jumping forward now and it's now a beautiful African evening. And we're going to go outside and uh, see if Carbonell wants to tell us what this mission actually is. I'm sure he's stalking me so he'll know when I wake up. Yep, there we go. He's on the phone. Alright man, I need you to scout out an APR stronghold further south of your position. An old lumber camp. I want to know what resources they got down there. There's a primo observation point marked on your map. Head there now. So he wants me to scout a local APR position. Well, that sounds easy enough. It's pretty close by. So let's head there now. Now, ordinarily, whenever you drive somewhere, you will encounter constant problems. Uh, well, if you look at this thing in front of me, that'll explain it. This little hut series of buildings and barricades normally would be filled with militiamen who will always attack you regardless of your faction alliance. All of the faction troops hate you. So normally traveling anywhere would mean constantly battling every time you come to one of those posts, which is pretty much at every corner and crossroads. So that is why this game has a very bad reputation for being an excellent game that is marred by that huge single problem. Anyway, I'm already at the location, so I've hidden my car in the brush and now there's a small path heading up onto the observation point that Carbonell mentioned so I'm going to head up there and see what it is, is exactly that he thinks is so important about this place. I can use this little monocular I have to look around and scout for interesting things which will then be marked on my map in the future. Uh, the interesting thing here is a health kit. I've also seen a few hostiles walking around. There's a mounted position over there with a heavy machine gun that I've spotted. And you can see there they're now plotted on my map. Oh, Carbonell's stalking me again. What does he want this time? Hola, got your intel. Not bad. You see the bricked up place? I hear the APR's got a hostage in there, some foreign national like you. Your new orders are to get in there and break them out. Finish up your recon if you think it'll help. So they're holding a foreigner hostage in the building nearby. 
and Carbonell, for whatever reason, wants to break him out. It's more in my benefit than his. I guess he just wants to see the APR screwed over. So he thinks I can take these guys on my own. Perhaps he's right. And there's not much else for me to do. Frank needs a friend in this situation, so perhaps by rescuing this guy, he won't be completely stuck out alone in the middle of nowhere. So I'm going to try and sneak up on the location where this guy is held and get him out. I'm staying off of the road and moving in the grass. I'm still fairly exposed, but the guys I saw wandering around on the road seem to be uh, gone, or perhaps they've gone back to the building. So it's allowing me to get closer and closer without being detected. The lowering light should help as well, should play to my advantage. I'm getting pretty close now, but I still haven't seen any enemies. I'm going to sneak around this trunk, but then I spot two guys nearby guarding the door to the building I'm going to need to go into. I scout them out with my monocular, but they both see me simultaneously. Poor news. So now Frank is going to be forced to fight. I get up my assault rifle and decide to try and fire in the vague direction of where they are. I think I got one of them there, perhaps two. Another guy is flanking me from the left, very sneaky. He gets a shot on me and I lose a big portion of my health there. Dangerous move, I'm not in very good cover here. I take him out, there's another guy flanking me to the left. I'm firing a few bursts at him, but I'm a little bit panicked and inaccurate. I'm not managing to hit him. I decide to move position since this position has been pretty much compromised. I take a bullet as I move, but overall I'm okay. I see someone running in the distance and manage to take him out. I have no idea how many enemies there actually were. I spot another one finish the rest of my clip trying to hit him and miss another guy comes at me from the back and unloading on him missing frantically and finally take him out wasting another clip I've only got one clip of ammunition left now moving up towards the building I don't see any more hostiles but I'm moving fast and ducking in between covers to make sure I don't get surprised I find someone I've wounded on the floor attempting to get back up I decide to put him out of his misery and finish him with that it seems I've defeated all of the militia in this area, at least I don't see any more, and the route towards the building I need to go into is clear, it's this small building here. So checking behind me to make sure things are safe, I move inside the building. Immediately I hear a voice, there's someone in here. My fever is coming back, it seems that little gun battle was a bit too much for my poor nerves. There's the voice again. I found some medical supplies inside, so my health has been restored. And then I open this bolted door to find the hostage. You're not a guard. My god, you are sick. Malaria. I have to get out of here, but I can help you get some medicine. Come find me at Mike's bar later. She says she's going to help me get some medicine for my malaria. Buddies such as this are people that you help or rescue or do something for in the progress of the game. And in return, they'll do things for you, featuring upgrading your safe house, providing you with extra missions or providing you with special ways to complete the main story missions. Carbonell is back on the blower. Let's see what he needs. Hey, my Ben, you did better than I expected. Look, maybe I was hasty in my evaluation of you. Guys that do good work for me get paid. Come on back up to the fishing pier and I'll cash you out. <laughs> so he's going to pay me. This is excellent news. Finally some proper motivation to do something. So I'm going to head back to Carbonell's little base and see what it is he wants. Hopefully that hostage I rescued will be okay escaping on her own. The local boys, of which there were fewer than ten, didn't care much for me. But I went the extra mile when it came to mischief. And I guess they ended up respecting that. I sure hope they did anyway, because I thought they were the shit. They were the antidote to the boredom-loaded sermons I got from my parents. Those kids were the first of many groups I felt some kind of loyalty to, and were by far the least fucked up. And back then, when it came to loyalty, I saw my parents as the bedrock of the loyalty ladder. And by that I mean that they were rock bottom. Doing the opposite of what they wanted became second nature, and sure enough, they ended up just not telling me what they wanted entirely. It was a kind of freedom, and I earned it all for myself by being a conceited brat without a thought for the only two lonely people who had a shred of interest in my well-being. Begin as you mean to go on, they say. So there I was, a rebellious kid stuck between a handful of houses and the merciless green of the countryside. With a world so small, it's no wonder I wanted to know about what was happening outside, behind the woods, beyond the hill. And the answer was that war was happening. The IRA, the Irish Republican Army. For generations they had been fighting a quiet war with the British. All they were fighting over were a few measly words like freedom and honour. But after finding a few of their pamphlets hidden in the local pub, I became convinced that everything shit in my life was somehow the fault of the British, 
and that only the heroes of the Republic could make it better. So I've made it back to Carbonell's base on this fishing pier. I'm going to head back inside and find out about this payment he spoke about. Hey, you made it. All right. Okay, here's how it works around here. The only currency worth shit is rough diamonds. Don't accept paper money from anybody. I wouldn't wipe my ass with it. You do work for the UFLL, you'll get paid in stones. Now, one of my guys, not the sharpest blade in the set, picked up a case of diamonds and dropped them off here yesterday. He stuck them somewhere in camp and promptly got shot in the head back in town. Maybe you killed him. Anyway, if you want those rocks, go outside and find them. The case has a tracker you can home in on with your compass. If I were you, I'd go buy some medicine first. That malaria is nothing to screw around with. You'll probably have some luck over at Mike's Bar. All those expat cabrones drink there. Get yourself healthy and come by the front office in town. I'll introduce you to Gakumba. Get you hooked up. Hey, he's coming out. Hasta luego. So there are some rough diamonds he's going to pay me with somewhere in his lair. And he's agreed to set me up with future work if I was to come by his office in the town. Potentially useful, not exactly what Frank needs right now, but at least if he's going to get money, arms and information he needs to complete his mission to find and kill the Jackal, it could be a good start. Now hunting for diamonds is something you can do all over South Mali because diamonds are hidden all over the place. You use this little GPS tracker you have, this little green light that indicates the direction of local diamond caches and you can use them to hunt them down. Here 10 rough diamonds were found, an ample payment for the work I did. And the game's telling me to go and buy new weapons which is something you do need to do to progress in the game because weapons you find from your enemies simply jam and break. I need to go to the actual weapons dealers and get some weapons for myself. And I also need to investigate this Mike's bar people keep mentioning, perhaps a place to find some allies in this screwed up location. Getting more information on the IRA turned out to be easy. My father was a sympathizer, but his zeal was crushed by my mother, who hated the whole idea. Nevertheless, by asking seemingly innocent questions of him and other men in the village, in the way only a 12-year-old kid can do, I learned more than I should have. What harm is there in telling a kid? He'll just forget it. He doesn't really care. Something else will come along. Perhaps true for the other kids, but too bad for them, I was a little bundle of hatred who wouldn't forget a detail if it meant a chance to get out of that village. My father told me a lot. He told me the IRA regularly operated nearby. He told me the names of people in the village who sometimes gave them supplies. He even told me that he himself had met IRA operatives. Suddenly my dad was a damn celebrity. But then, when he realized that I actually cared about that shit, he started telling me to forget it all and forbade me from ever bringing the subject up again. Well, that just told me I'd hit gold. I did keep quiet about it at home from then on though. The homeschooling continued but I never got far with most of it. The months went by and I guess my parents thought I'd pass through my IRA phase. But whenever they weren't watching I was preparing. I was stalking the woods, building shelters, I was studying the maps of the local area, I was finding out about and practicing just about anything that might help me convince the IRA to join them. All that went on for about two years until one day my application was suddenly shifted to the top of the IRA's in-tray. I've returned to the safe house and you can see there are some grenades and petrol bombs that have spawned here for me to add to my inventory. This is just the beginning of the sorts of things you can find in the safe house. And now I'm going to go to sleep for the night and begin the rest of Frank's possible leads tomorrow. So Frank has had an interesting couple of days. He came to South Mali wishing to kill the Jackal for reasons I have not yet revealed, but he finds himself infected with malaria and now is forced to work for the South Malian militias just to survive in this harsh world. But it seems there are some possible leads towards finding the Jackal, but he just has to stay alive long enough to follow them. So thanks for watching, next time we'll be seeing Frank settle into his new life in South Mali and we'll be hearing about how Frank's obsession with the IRA gave him his first taste of war. That's next time on Frank's Penance.